Okay, fantastic. All right, welcome. <laughs> so um, today we're going to, uh, it's just, actually, this is a series of um, leader learning where we're going to be interviewing successful leaders in our group uh, on how they've come about um, starting the group, uh, you know, why they started, um, where they've taken their group to, uh, and uh, how they've been motivated for the group. So, um, and, and you know, generally where you're going to move forwards from here. So, I do have uh, Matthew from kindly staying up Saturday evening there, and it's uh, Sunday morning here in uh, Adelaide, Australia. And uh, I have um, prefect uh, Matthew with some questions. Uh, so, firstly, I just want to say welcome and thank you, Matthew taking the time to let us know because you've got some really exciting information um, about how you started your groups, particularly because you know, you've been working in a hospital setting and I know that there are a lot of people uh, that want to um, be able to, you know, take meditation into that hospital setting. So firstly, I'm just going to ask you, um, uh, uh, you know, what, what is your background and, and um, what field do you currently work in? Well, currently, I am a massage therapist at the Candler Hospital Wellness Center. Part of their initiative for 2018 was to expand uh, services offered to include meditation. So my arrival during the summer months and offered up myself as a contract meditation instructor was more than just coincidental it was very providential for everybody involved I originally got involved in meditation many years ago in a style of meditation called centering prayer uh, it was offered through a non-denominational spirituality center in the last town that I lived in from there I took it to a vipassana practice and after many, many years of studying on my own, I got to the point where I wanted to do more and take it to everybody else to share with them the benefits that I've gained from meditation as well. So as a massage therapist, there's aspects of my job where meditation is very beneficial. Uh, part of my wellness program for myself is yoga. So there is meditation involved in yoga. And even, in the medi even during a massage session, it could almost be meditative in the sense that you are responsible for bringing your client down from a heightened state of awareness to a centered state of awareness so they could fall into a state of relaxation beyond what just the manual therapy can provide. Wow. And, yeah? Well, currently, I am a full-time employee at the hospital now. Um, doing not only massage, but I have upwards of about one to two hours a week in meditation, depending on what's going on. Uh, I provide weekly meditation classes for up to a half hour. It is with our Silver Sneaker program. It is a series of seniors who come in once a week and sit for my meditation class. And the response on it's been exceptionally positive beyond my expectation initially and each week now that I've been solely responsible for the class um, attendance has been increasing steadily by one and two people. Fantastic. When they realized what meditation could do they had me do a couple of special projects to see if the demand was there and we're a magnet hospital which is a status that's bestowed to hospitals that are exceptional in the area of nursing skills and uh, healthcare uh, providing we're going for our fifth certification as a magnet hospital and part of that program was meditation so they actually had me as part of the magnet team to teach meditation to several departments over the course of a couple months in support of that magnet certification and although formally we haven't been certified our fifth continuous magnet rating um i believe 
because of the positive feedback from the initial contact with me teaching meditation, they teamed me up with the yoga instructor, and I took um, over for about 15, 20 minutes at the end of her class to teach a more detailed meditation. And after about four or five months, she moved on to another job, and they gave me the class full time, not teaching yoga, but to actually remove the yoga option and make it fully meditative. So it is very new. We've only done two weeks now purely in meditation. And it's the, the feedback and the response has been very positive. Mm, that's fantastic. Um, and can I ask how, so in the hospital setting, you were a massage therapist there. Or, and who did you approach, or did someone approach you because you were in that setting? Within a wellness center at a hospital here in the southeast of the U.S. is relatively unknown. Um, because of historical stereotypes about meditation, it's close association purely with yoga. To actually come in as a meditation practitioner into a wellness center they weren't expecting that because they didn't know who they should reach out to. So in a strange twist of coincidence, having recently been certified, I took a program proposal to them. I showed them what I could do for them. And then in return, they not only accepted the proposal, but they also brought me on as a full-time employee which was beyond what I originally had intended, but I could see the benefits of being employed full-time to not only provide massage, which will give me access to various departments, but then I can also talk about the benefits of meditation. Yeah, amazing. And did you write that proposal yourself? Um, for... Yes, I did, but it was motivated purely from a nursing point of view. My wife is a nurse, my mother-in-law is a nurse, and many of our close associates are nurses. So I understand the specific needs of nurses when it comes to dealing with stress. So pulling down several research papers, I use that as the basis of my initial proposal, stating that we could reduce the incident of burnout and also improve the standard of healthcare for the individual patients because the nursing staff is less stressed, less overwhelmed with their duties. So you pitched it at the nurses, the employees to start with, and now it's progressed to the... Yes, I started originally with the individual who was responsible for the wellness program, which in a sense is the program built within the wellness center to do with those activities that we do in support of our daily job. Yoga, healthy eating, um, just a general positive health um, approach to health. So talking to her, she put me in contact with somebody else who put me in contact with somebody else and eventually enough doors got opened up that when we sat down, they hired me first as an employee to see where they could fit me into the existing budget and the current existing scheduled program. So it wasn't immediate, but I got my foot and my other foot in the door. So there I stood doing what I did naturally, massage, constantly talking about meditation. And then when the opportunity was there, I started teaching those um, brief meditations on a weekly basis during the yoga class. There was a few special projects that came up. And then eventually the budget, the schedule all opened up into what it is now. That's a nice thing. And um, there's, I, there's a picture of you dressed up in your theatre gown before taking um, theatre staff through a meditation prior to surgery. That, that's amazing. Do you still do, you still do that? Um, what that was was for actually the surgical staff. Yeah. And the whole point behind that was to get them to realise that there are aspects of their prep that they could turn into moments of meditation. Drawing on the scrub sink as the initial inspiration, the minute or so that they're standing at the scrub sink, washing their hands, 
I showed them how they can actually use that as a first opportunity to meditate for about a minute, minute and a half. Noting the quality and the texture of the water, the temperature, and just their overall sense of self as they stood there bent over the sink. Then I showed how the setup of the actual OR suite could turn into something reminiscent of a uh, Japanese uh, tea ceremony where eat, the placement of each tool became very deliberate and their focus was entirely on that one action without thinking about the next one. Getting them to be very aware of where they were at that very moment. Um, and then once the patient was brought in, the doctor realized that he had the final moment of meditation. Everything was in place. Everything was ready to go and they stopped for a moment. Everybody took a few, few breaths and then they can start into the, the operation. The, I showed them very quickly how several one-minute moments of meditation throughout the setup could turn into a good 10 minutes, and that's all just before the first operation. And you do that a couple times a day, you get anywhere from 20 minutes to 30 minutes of meditation spread throughout your day, and you don't even realize the positive impact it has on you as a healthcare provider, and your patients directly benefit from that. Yeah, that's wonderful. And what has been um, the what benefits have they noticed? Have they realized to you? The benefit is I, I don't know if you can say it's a direct, but indirectly, they've actually come to the wellness center for additional training. Huh? Oh. They not only just want me there once a quarter to do a refresher course. No, they want to come on a weekly <laughs> basis. <laughs> That's, that's awesome, Matthew. That's uh, a really great news story. Um, I think that the world is changing now and more corporates and hospitals and schools are really starting to look towards how mindfulness can help them. So the opportunities are opening up. And I guess the main question that I imagine a lot of the leaders that will be looking at this is, you know, whether they can replicate what you've been able to do. So, you know, just curious to know if you were giving advice to one of us who might be at the moment running a small uh, community group but wanted to get into either the public system or the uh, corporate system, you know, how would you recommend that we go about that and there, are there certain sectors that are more open to that, that sort of thing? The, the way to look at it, to initiate it on your end for yourself as an individual, work, take a look at what I'm doing to expand. Because we're a wellness center, we have several programs. We're now going to start expanding into weight management, diabetes management, simply because meditation has been found to benefit those participants in addition to just being aware of what they're eating, how they're exercising. But if they start to take a look at the emotional component, and what drives them to eat incorrectly or what they're doing in terms of exercise or not doing, they could incorporate meditation on a daily basis to help manage their particular situation. Um, the other area is a Parkinson's program. Again, another case study that I've got off to the side here shows that meditation has been shown to reduce the symptoms of Parkinson's and in one or two rare cases, actually put the disease process into a stasis where it neither advanced nor got better. And symptomatically, it was pretty much stable for several years. So when you want to introduce meditation into the community where you're at, you may not be as big as Savannah or have the hospital with the wellness program. But start looking at these little programs that are set up in the community to support these various aspects that we know through research have benefited from meditation. Again, weight management, um, diabetes management. Um, and I mean, specific to my hospital, we have a big Parkinson's program. And most recently, on two occasions, a couple of the Parkinson's patients during the meditation I've observed them after the first few minutes, the tremors in their hands stopped for the time, the remaining time that we were meditating. I haven't done much more with that simply because of what else is going on right now, but it's, it shows what's possible. 
And I think going into this, not even knowing what's not possible has allowed me to do much, much more. Not knowing what I can't do is, is the greatest thing because I try everything. I knock on every door. I talk to everybody. Um, anybody who's willing to give me 10 or 15 minutes of meditation opportunity with their program, I take it. Because eventually something's going to sink up, fall into place, and it will just take hold and start from there. I've been with the hospital for 10 months, and it's only now I'm starting to see not an exponential growth, but a deliberate, concerted attempt to maintain the meditation we have and begin to expand it into other programs. Yeah, so that's great advice. So I guess to summarize and sort of repeat what you're saying is rather than necessarily going into a place like a hospital with an idea of, you know, I'm coming in to sell you a meditation program, maybe go in there open-minded in the first instance just to listen to find out what their needs are and also a little bit, you know, what programs are starting to get up and running and then, you know, therefore there's funding already being allocated to those programs and then on the second visit, so to speak, then come with a proposal uh, to sort of meet the needs that you heard in the first meeting rather than necessarily going straight in and saying, look, I've got a meditation program that I can help in this way. The key is not to appear like a used car salesman, but literally the complete opposite. You were there to help them achieve their goals mm. yeah. on the f first couple of meetings. When they begin to trust you, and trust is a big component of this, when, where there's limited budget, they, they should invite you back and begin to incorporate you on a regular basis. And that's how you can tell their level of interest. Do that enough, and I know it's terrible to say this, but when I was first starting out in massage, sometimes you have to give away a massage, sometimes you have to give away a meditation. Not too long, not too detailed, 10 or 15 minutes. Sometimes you have to do that to get the response you need for management to make it a regular part of any program. Yeah, no, absolutely. No, that's good advice. Mm. Um, I'm just checking time. So um, I'm wondering now, um, do, uh, Roman or Susan, do you have any questions for Matthew? We've got about 10 minutes. Okay. Oh, that, that was amazing. So, so exciting to hear. Thank you so much. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, really great. Um, yeah, uh, that, that's exciting in terms of um, if, you, if you were looking at, I was particularly interested maybe in helping um, with meditation at the Olivia Newton John Cancer Centre here in Melbourne, um, and it's really great advice to to because I had looked at that putting something together to offer them, but now you say that I get that. It's better to go in there and say, you know, what are your needs? What can what can I do for you? You know. Long term, we have our own cancer program associated with the hospital. It's the Lewis Cancer Research Pavilion. It's across the street. We've made initial contact, but I'm still looking for that opportunity where I can go into the infusion room where they'll sit for three or four hours. Give them the tools to do those one moment of meditation right there to several patients. That's feedback you, you can't pay for. That's just amazing feedback they're going to give the nursing staff. And the hospital or the cancer center shouldn't be able to refuse the obvious, we need to have this here. And those are the free, those are the free opportunities you need to give away sometimes to get their attention. Yeah. If, if, if only to get a second appointment to have a longer meeting with leadership and the decision makers and see what's possible. Yeah. Yes, well, uh, we were talking about um, when when they're feeling nauseous, when they're having their chemo and radiation and what have you, um, you know, maybe there are some nutritional supplements that could support them because they lose their appetite and what have you and don't feel like eating. But then you're always concerned about 
what can they have that's not going to interact with the medication they're already using. But if you can offer meditation, then there's no concerns with that at all, and you can still support them really well to feel better. That's correct. A few recent um, imaging appointments I've had to the hospital, MRIs, CAT scans, you're laying there for 10, 15, 20 minutes. Yeah. For us, it's pretty easy to slip into a meditative state. Mm. For other people, it's just sheer panic and anxiety yeah. because they're, yeah. they feel trapped. Giving them a tool to come down to a level of relaxation despite the claustrophobic nature of imaging might be the edge they need as opposed to a sedative. Mm. And that's where we can start to become very effective when we literally solve a problem that they don't even know they have, that they've always treated with just pharmaceuticals or just deal with it. I um, have a suggestion and as well as a couple of favors. Uh, one of the suggestions, an idea because my, my mother just recently got diagnosed with ovarian cancer and so I actually created three meditations for her to listen to and so she can play them and because I think that they are pitched you know to her and like in this case it's her son giving her the meditation then of course it's more powerful but you know just uh, it's so easy to record a 10 or 15 minute meditation and if you can use the person's name and you know use the hospital where they go or whatever that, that might be another powerful way to, to help you know, individual people that, and they would be very um, blown away by that generosity. Uh, so that's just one idea that I had. The, 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 the two, the two favours I'd like to ask um, you, Matthew, uh, if you don't okay. mind, is one, whether you could share that proposal with us on, on the page where we'll post this, this video. Um, and then the second one is... Um, whether we could, you know, if at some stage you get testimonials, whether we could put those testimonials up so that people like Susan can take maybe those testimonials to Melbourne Hospital and, and say, look, this is the impact that we're having on other, in other hospitals around the world. Uh, and likewise, other leaders could take those testimonials as collaborating evidence and part of the School for Mind program, that sort of thing. Well, there's an interesting concept to complement and support that last idea. Mm -hmm. So often, various countries have sister states, sister cities. Why not the idea that I can take to my leadership when they finally get all those patient feedbacks? Why not a patient, uh, a sister hospital in another country that ne doesn't necessarily know how to start their own meditation program? Yeah. You mentioned Melbourne Hospital. I've had the leadership come by me specifically to see how things are going. Now that I know that there's an opportunity to form a informal relationship with another hospital, there may be a great way we can get that feedback packaged up in such a way that we can get it to the Melbourne leadership and get them talking on their levels to see what they can do, what they can't do, what could work, what can't work. So there's an opportunity here. Don't know how to get to the end yet. But I got to start getting, I got to start getting the feedback from my own hospital, and it's only now starting to trickle in. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Amazing, and hopefully you know that can go through all hospitals. You know, the the city in Australia. You know, if we could get that new network going. Um, I'm I'm sorry, I'm going to be timekeeping. We've got yep. four minutes. So, um, from when did you have a, any quick questions for Matthew? While we've still got some time. Um, no, not really. I think everything I've sort of was thinking about has been answered and I've just been jotting notes like a crazy person. Um, I'm <laughs> loving the, yeah, I'm loving the whole idea of, um, of going into hospitals and um, I wrote also, you know, taking it into aged care homes. I think that would be another um, great avenue that we could, um, that I'm willing to kind of explore. And I'm, I guess I'm just um, liking the idea of getting, um, feedback um, that you can take to say, you know, like Suzanne said, hey, look, this this is um, what's happened in a hospital over in the US and this is the feedback then and the benefits that they've gained. And then also um, I just thought about you, Matthew, you mentioned the case study into Parkinson's. Um, 
So I was kind of wondering about where you would find those, but I guess just a simple search on the internet would, would bring up a whole bunch of stuff in that. Well, what, what I can do for tomorrow, since tomorrow's my day off where I'm not really doing anything laborious, I'm gonna, I can bring up those case studies, post them on our uh, the Facebook page, and you'll know where to pull them down oh, that yourself. Would be awesome. That would be awesome. Oh, that would be awesome. Okay. And then I've got to, I've got to go digging for that original nurse's proposal. I know it's on my computer somewhere, and provided I haven't renamed the file, I should be able to find something. Yeah, good. That, that would be amazing. Um, so, um, yeah, um, so I've got two minutes. Did that, Peter? Did you want to wrap uh, no, it up? No, I think we'll wrap it up there. We'll, we'll keep it short and sweet. And obviously, uh, if anyone wants to contact. Matthew or ourselves, they can post it on the, on the Facebook page, uh, questions. So, yeah, no, we'll wrap it up there. Fantastic. Wonderful. Thank you so much for your time, Matthew. You've got an amazing My pleasure. Um, really Thank great you. Have yeah. a great day, Thank everybody. You. Okay. My pleasure. Thank you. Have a lovely day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Bye. Peter. Okay. Bye. See you. Bye. 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 Bye.